Hi everybody, this is Rose of Sharon and I'm back again with another book review. I don't have the book currently with me, but it is a children's book and it is called The Summer of the Swans. And the main character is um, having her 14th birthday and she is supposed to be watching over Charlie who has um, mental disability. They actually call him retarded, which, uh, well, in some of the um, scenes in the book itself, the characters that are your more Hector-ish, your, your bullies, basically, they um, use that as an insult. And I always thought of that as an insult myself because I'm, I'm going to actually tell a little bit of a story about <laughs> my childhood. Uh, um, childhood was good when I was at home with mom and dad because, you know, I was with people who loved and cared about me. When I went to school, however, it was an entirely different matter. For some strange reason, they decided to put me in remedial classes, which I never really comprehended because I thought, um, no, my, my reading level is much higher than what you're giving me, so... I just don't get it. However, I have to say that my mathematical abilities, eh, I, <laughs> they're lacking. <clears throat> That's one area that I have some issue. I don't have numerophobia. Like, I, I mean, I really had a bad numerophobia um, growing up in junior high, which was absolutely terrifying, but... For the most part, I've I've overcome that, and I just I remember a lot of people calling me retard growing up, and it, yeah, it did hurt. <sighs> but I'm I'm not mentally retarded. I don't have any mental disabilities. I have been diagnosed with bipolar type one, which um, I just I think is as a label. It has nothing to do with me, and it doesn't define who I am. Um, my moods are, they're perfectly okay. They're perfectly fine. I'm perfectly quote unquote normal, <laughs> whatever the heck that means. But it just, it was a story that it hit close to home because yes, I've, I've dealt with people with Down syndrome. I've actually interacted with people who are deaf. Uh, I've had the delight of speaking with people who acquire blindness later on in their lives and these people inspire me they really do and one of the the persons who has really just um made me think about my own <clears throat> upbringing and livelihood is this young individual that i encountered when i was at university and he had no hands. So he was the coolest person ever, I swear to you. He would eat with his feet. And I thought, oh, that's so neat. So, you know, I made a friend with him and, you know, I talked to him all the time. And he was the just the nicest person you'd ever want to meet and just so fun and had a great sense of humor. And I just thought that um, it was the most incredible thing. And I thought of him as Sithandra from from Aeon Flux because she actually, she's different because she was given those enhancements through her genetic manipulation and everything, but still, Sithander was just kick-ass. I, I love her so much. <laughs> she's probably one of my favorite female characters ever to grace anything other than Aeon herself, but uh, he, he really reminded me of Sithandra, just... Um, he was um, this person who um, <laughs> exuded this positive energy. And I thought, you know what? I want to do that too. And I want to inspire people despite the fact that a lot of people think I have this disability. Well, I have lack of depth perception and I do lack direction even with a GPS. I. I guess that's a flaw, but it doesn't stop me from achieving all I could because I've actually come very far. And 
with this story in and of itself, the main character, she's given charge over Charlie, who is um, mentally disabled or mentally retarded. And um, <laughs> he wants to go see the swans at the lake. And there are lots of things that occur. And uh, it's actually a really good story. It was given a Newbery Medal and for good reason. And you could understand her um, <laughs> dread, mm, excuse me, this the dread that overtakes her. Um, I really can't say that much else about the book itself that was written by Bethany Byers. <clears throat> she wrote other books, but I, I do think that Summer of the Swans was the only one that received a Newbery Medal. And as I had stated before, it rightfully deserves this, this accolade <clears throat> because of how well written it is. It's one of those stories, even though it's written for children, that will grasp your attention right away because you keep wondering, oh, well, what's going to happen to Charlie? Charlie's just such an innocent character and you feel for him. And uh, ha uh, being somebody who... Restless with fear of abandonment from the time that I was young, I can definitely relate to this. And it's less so now because I know that I'm not going to get left behind anytime soon in any kind of situation. But uh, I've been on the other side of losing my place in a group and wondering if I was ever going to be found again and I didn't know what would happen to me and it was actually the scariest thing. The worst one that I've ever experienced was when I was in Chicago. I don't think that I've told the story but I'm gonna tell a little bit about myself. Um, I went to see Hamilton and uh, I went with my friend Jesse and Jesse and I are, we just text, we don't see each other anymore. Um, but you know, he's, he's a good guy and I'm, I'm glad that I had that experience with him so we could learn, but, <laughs> uh, <laughs> we went to see Hamilton. It, it was outstanding and phenomenal and spectacular and all the plaudits, <laughs> but, um, <laughs> it was raining after we had exited the, um, the Majestic, what used to be the Majestic, actually ma the Majestic was shot at this particular location, if you've ever been to this particular theater that I'm mentioning. Um, we did not remember where my Volkswagen was, and I didn't have any technology that would actually ping the location. My phone's not that sophisticated. <laughs> so, he and I had to enlist the help of a couple of men, and they were very much drunk and I had to lie and I felt like a deplorable person or lack of humanity or <laughs> amoeba. I, I felt even worse than an amoeba. But <clears throat> I told them, oh, I'll take you wherever you want to go. <laughs> yeah, lying. I don't lie well, but you know, they didn't know me that I'm trustworthy enough and that that's probably one of the few times I've ever really lied. I, I, I lied to save my life. But um, I gave him a, a bold-faced lie. And I looked straight into Jesse's face and I said, let's get the hell out of here. So I floored my foot on that accelerator and I sped out of that parking lot faster than you can say sassafras. And we were out. We said, bye Felicia to Chicago. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I like Chicago, but, um, yeah, Chicago is a little bit scary for my tastes. I'm more of a suburbanite than I am a big city girl, and it's obvious, but, um, <clears throat> it was, it was terrifying. And having read the story from this perspective, it just, it really hits home, especially having been on the, the other side of the curtain and being lost. But 
that's pretty much all I had to say about Summer of the Swans. If you haven't read it, then I highly recommend it. It's a really good book. And that's basically all I have to say. So until next time, live long prosper. Ciao, Titi.